Well, we're, we're almost 30 feet off the ground here on some scaffolding, and it's a, a special day. In 1987, I laid the first stone in the basement foundation of this house. And I'm kind of embarrassed to say that it's taken me 31 years to get this far, but uh, this particular stone you see here is quite significant. It's the date stone. I'm going to be setting this, and uh, I wanted to let you see that. This is a special time. I didn't think it was gonna take this long. Uh, as I said, I'm kind of embarrassed it's taken me this long, but in my defense, I, I have financed a household of seven people. We have five kids now, all of which came along since I started this project. And uh, after this stone, I probably have uh, four or five more stones to go, and then it will be done. The last thing to do when you're setting any stone, or when I'm setting stones here, is to, uh, to do the pointing. And I've gone with an old style here. All old stonework, uh, traditional structural stonework that I've seen has mortar joints that cover the edges of the stone. This tool is kind of interesting. It was given to me by an old stonemason. He was born in 1909. His name was Ivan Bailey. I've written about him many times, actually. And, and this is one of the tools that he'd use to make this line profile here. So for most stones, it actually takes just as long to do the pointing as it does to set the stone. So I'll put a little more mortar in there later. But now I'm just, I'm just connecting these lines. It's funny that they don't look all that important close up, but far away it really changes the look of the stonework. And now it's the time for the, this vertical one. Well, I'm about to lay the last stone. I'm going to take you up in the scaffolding and show you how that works. It's a little different than regular stones, but I've been, um, I I've got the last load of mortar here and it's in a special wheelbarrow. This is a wheelbarrow I haven't used for years because it's getting kind of old and feeble, but it is the wheelbarrow that Mary and I built the house with. So the vast majority of mortar uh, was mixed and dumped into this wheelbarrow. Stones were moved. Um, before I had running water, when I was living in the shed, I used to take baths in that wheelbarrow on Saturday nights, and I figured the last load of mortar should be transported by this wheelbarrow since it's been with us from the start. So as you see, it's, it's kind of messy, but I'm gonna rebuild it when we're all done, but I wanted it in its original condition for this particular operation. So the uh, mortar goes on this hoist. I've built here and my tool, and I'll see you up top. Okay, so I've got the last stone here and it's very different than any other stone I've laid in the house, or, and except for the other peaks. Um, it's it's got to fit between the, uh, the 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 soffit here, and of course once the stone is in place, I can't grab it and move it and set it. So I've drilled a hole here for this uh, this masonry screw, which gives me a handle, and I'm going to be tipping the stone back and moving it back like this, laying in some mortar, and then lifting the stone up and pulling it forward by the handle, and setting it down on the mortar. I'm going to let that harden and then the very last thing to do is to come up in a couple of days from now and and take this screw out. The hole won't be visible, it's too small, so I'm going to get to it. Okay, now that's, that's way more mortar than we need, but that's just what I want because it lets me wiggle it down here. Lucky for me, it's kind of hard to see what's going on down below. That's it. All done.